Have you ever wondered why commercial planes fly slower than they did in the past? It's a puzzling question, isn't it? We live in an era where technological advancements are happening at lightning speed. We've got cars that can drive themselves, rockets that can land back on Earth after launching into space and yet, our planes seem to be dawdling. Take the Concorde for instance. This supersonic passenger jet, which was in service from 1976 to 2003, could reach speeds over twice the speed of sound. That's faster than a rifle bullet. Yet here we are in 2024, and our commercial flights are meandering along at just over half that speed. So, what gives? Why have our planes slowed down instead of sped up? Is it because we've lost the technology? Or is there more to this story? Let's dive into the reasons behind this seemingly counterintuitive phenomenon. In the 1970s, we had the Concorde, a supersonic passenger airliner that could fly at speeds over twice the speed of sound. This iconic aircraft, a marvel of engineering, was a symbol of luxury and speed. The Concorde was not just any plane, it was a statement. Its needle-nose design and delta wings were as much a testament to the futuristic vision of its designers as they were functional necessities for supersonic flight. The Concorde could reach speeds of up to 1,354 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, it could fly from London to New York in just over three and a half hours, less than half the time it takes on a modern commercial flight. Now that's speedy. But it wasn't all about speed. The Concorde was also about efficiency. Its four Rolls-Royce slash Snecma Olympus 593 engines were designed for both subsonic and supersonic speeds, meaning it could take off and land at regular airports, yet still reach those incredible speeds once in the air. Yet despite all its glory, the Concorde was retired in 2003. Why, you might ask? Well, it wasn't because we couldn't build fast planes anymore. In fact, the technology to build supersonic airliners has only improved since the Concorde's heyday. However, the Concorde was expensive to run and maintain. Its high operating costs meant ticket prices were steep, making it an exclusive luxury few could afford. Also, the sonic boom it generated when breaking the sound barrier was a nuisance, leading to restrictions on where it could fly. And let's not forget the tragic Air France Flight 4590 in the year 2000, where a Concorde crashed shortly after takeoff, killing all on board and four people on the ground. This accident, while not solely to blame, certainly contributed to the Concorde's retirement. So, if technology isn't the problem, what is? Well, stick around and we'll delve deeper into the reasons why our planes are flying slower today, even though we have the technology to fly faster. The simple answer to why planes fly slower today is fuel efficiency. Fuel efficiency is a significant factor in the aviation industry. It's the art of getting the most mileage out of each gallon of fuel. Just like in your car, a plane's speed affects its fuel consumption. The faster it goes, the more fuel it burns. Now you might be wondering, why does speed affect fuel consumption? Well, it's due to something we call drag. When a plane travels at high speeds, it encounters more air resistance or drag, which requires more power and hence more fuel to overcome. Let's take a moment to picture this. Imagine you're driving on the highway. As you speed up, you feel the wind pushing against your car, right? That's drag. And just like your car burns more fuel at high speeds to fight against that drag, so do planes. Now here's where things get interesting. By flying slower, planes can significantly reduce their fuel consumption. A slight decrease in speed can lead to a significant increase in fuel efficiency. This might seem counterintuitive, but it's a fact that airlines have capitalized on. The benefits of fuel efficiency extend beyond just saving fuel. It also impacts ticket prices and airline profits. Fuel is one of the most significant operational costs for airlines. By reducing fuel consumption, airlines can save a substantial amount of money which in turn can lead to lower ticket prices for passengers. It's a win-win situation for both airlines and passengers. Moreover, increased fuel efficiency also means that planes can fly longer distances without needing to refuel. This opens up the possibility for more direct long-haul flights providing more convenience for passengers and more profitability for airlines. In conclusion, fuel efficiency plays a crucial role in the aviation industry. It's a balancing act between speed, fuel consumption, cost and convenience. It's a major reason why commercial planes fly slower than they did in the past. But there's more to it than just fuel efficiency. Another factor is the environmental and noise concerns. Now this might seem a little counterintuitive but bear with me, slower speeds actually result in less noise pollution. That's right, the faster a plane goes, the more noise it produces. 
This is due to the engines working harder and producing more thrust, which in turn creates more noise. So by slowing down planes can significantly reduce the amount of noise they produce, making life a little more peaceful for those living near airports. In addition to noise pollution, there's also the issue of carbon emissions. Air travel is a significant contributor to global carbon emissions, and the faster a plane goes, the more fuel it consumes, and the more carbon dioxide it pumps into the atmosphere. Slower speeds on the other hand, mean less fuel consumption and consequently, lower carbon emissions. In recent years, there's been a dramatic shift towards being more environmentally friendly. This is not just a trend, but a necessity brought about by the escalating climate crisis. Many airlines are now making significant efforts to reduce their carbon footprints, and one of the ways they're achieving this is by flying their planes at slower speeds. It's a delicate balancing act, maintaining operational efficiency while also taking into account environmental and noise concerns. But it's a challenge that the aviation industry is rising to in its quest to make air travel more sustainable and less disruptive to communities. So, the next time you're on a flight and you feel like it's taking a little longer than it used to, remember that it's not just about getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible, it's also about doing so in a way that's considerate of our environment and the people living under the flight paths. Before we continue, don't forget to hit the like button if you're finding this interesting, and consider subscribing for more content like this. Lastly, we have to consider air traffic and safety. Imagine the sky is a bustling city during rush hour, but instead of cars and bikes you have airplanes. Sounds chaotic, right? Just like traffic on the ground, air traffic needs to be managed meticulously to avoid collisions and keep things moving smoothly. Slower flying speeds are a crucial aspect of this management. Why is that, you ask? Well, slower speeds give air traffic controllers more time to coordinate the movements of multiple aircraft. They can ensure a safe distance is maintained between planes, reducing the risk of mid-air collisions. On top of that, slower speeds also allow pilots more reaction time. If a sudden obstacle or change in weather conditions occurs, a pilot flying at a slower speed has a better chance of safely navigating the situation. Now let's talk about some of the safety measures in place in the aviation industry. Air traffic control towers are equipped with advanced radar systems that track the position, speed and altitude of every plane in their airspace. Controllers use this information to guide pilots, ensuring safe takeoffs, flights and landings. Moreover, airplanes themselves are designed with safety in mind. For instance, they are equipped with Traffic Collision Avoidance Systems, or TCS. This onboard system alerts pilots of other nearby aircraft that could pose a collision risk, giving them ample time to adjust their course. And don't forget about the training pilots undergo. They are taught to prioritize safety above all else, and are trained to handle a wide range of potential in-flight emergencies. This training combined with the slower speeds gives them the best possible chance to keep passengers safe. So, while we might be flying slower, we're doing so for very good reasons. The aviation industry places a high priority on safety and efficiency, and slower flight speeds are a key component of that. So the next time you're up in the air, remember, we're not just flying, we're flying smart. To sum it up, commercial planes fly slower today due to a combination of factors. We've journeyed through the golden age of the Concorde, the supersonic marvel that once ruled the skies. However, as we discovered, the need for fuel efficiency quickly became a game-changer, prompting airlines to favor slower, more economical aircraft. Environmental and noise concerns have also played a significant role. Air travel has an environmental footprint, and reducing speed is one of the ways we can lessen its impact. Quieter skies are also more pleasant for those on the ground, another reason for the reduced speed. Safety considerations and air traffic management are other crucial factors. Slower speeds mean fewer air accidents and a more manageable flow of aircraft in our busy skies. So next time you're on a flight, take a moment to appreciate the careful balance of speed, efficiency, and safety. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more